everybody. Welcome to the first video for Math 10. This is also the first video in our unit on exploratory data analysis. And the way we're going to kick off Math 10 is by introducing Deep Note. For those of you coming from Math 9, you're probably already pretty familiar with this type of setup. Um, it should remind you of a Jupyter notebook. But let's just kind of go over the basics and see maybe some differences, or if this is your first time ever seeing something like this. Um, this will be the introduction. So right off the bat, um, my screen, the text might look a little bit bigger than yours. I am zoomed in a little bit more than normal, just so that if you're watching this on a phone or a smaller screen, it should hopefully still be legible. And just kind of looking around. So here we can see I'm in this project called Math 10 Recordings, or this is the, the, the workspace. Here is the project called Math 10 Recordings. And over here, I have a notebook called EDA Unit 1. So notebook here just means it's this type of document where I'm going to have a combination of code and text. We're not going to worry about integrations in this class, but eventually when we upload files to do some data analysis, this is where we'll take care of that. So you'll click the plus button here, and then you'll decide how you're going to upload your file. If we scroll a little bit further down, we'll have a table of contents, and it also tells us uh, that we're using Python 3.9 and a few other uh, pieces of information um, that we'll discuss as they become relevant for us. So you might be wondering, especially if you just came from Math 9, why the sudden switch to DeepNote? And the main difference I'd say between DeepNote and Jupyter Notebook is the ease with which you can collaborate on notebooks together. And what I mean by that is notice this share button right here. All I have to do is click share and then I can enter the names or emails of people that I want to add to the project, and then they can also edit. Or you can come here and change permissions. So it could, you could be view only, it could be comment only. So this is the real powerful part of uh, DeepNote. If you think about if you wanted to collaborate on Jupyter Notebook, um, I think in Math uh, 9 in our uh, course that just ended over the summer, um, if you wanted to collaborate with someone, you'd probably open a Zoom call with them, have somebody open their screen with Jupyter Notebook, and then you'd kind of work on it together. Versus here, anybody that you add to the project can edit and you can kind of work together um, at times that are convenient for you. So, okay, um, that's where you can go to share. When you turn in your homework, for instance, we'll probably ask that you give uh, me and your TA comment permission so we can not only look at your homework, but leave comments as well. Um, you can play with the permissions here too if you want to share with anyone else. But for instance, let's say you're going to work on a homework assignment with one of your classmates, you would create a project together and then a notebook and add each other. So hopefully that answers a little bit of why the sudden switch to DeepNote. A couple other things I want to show you. So if I go to the three dots here in the top right corner, I can hide the user interface. So I'm going to hide it just for this video because it's not going to be super important for us yet. Up here, you can see version history. You can see comments. And first thing I think I want to show you is if I click here on command palette, this automatically kind of tells me not just what kinds of uh, actions I can do. So for instance, creating a new notebook, new file, and so on. Um, but it also tells us a number of keyboard shortcuts. And I think learning a couple keyboard shortcuts uh, now will save you a huge amount of time kind of going forward. And it might not seem like that big of a deal, but let me just kind of show you what I mean. So let's say I wanted to create a code cell. Well, I could go here and click code and that's fine. Or I could do command shift J and that also creates the code cell for me. What if I wanted to delete this? Well, I know that the command for delete is command shift delete. Or I could have gone here and pressed delete. So again, learning a couple keyboard shortcuts now will save you a lot of time in the future. I'm going to open the command palette a little bit later in this video just to show you uh, two more commands that I think are very essential. So um, let's get into first a little bit of that, the distinction between code cells and markdown cells. So, and I believe DeepNote calls them blocks. If you hear me call them cells, that's the terminology from Jupyter. Um, essentially the same thing. It's a unit within the notebook. So you can see here I have this introduction to DeepNote title. If I click enter on my keyboard, now I can edit this block. So notice the single pound symbol that tells me it's going to be a title. Um, for those of you that are familiar with HTML, this uh, should look very familiar. Um, here's my title. To run the cell, I'm going to press command enter. I could have also done shift enter. And what that does is it generates a new code cell below it. So 
what I want you to do now is say this is an example of a code cell. So notice when I try to run it, and maybe this is actually, maybe it did give me a markdown cell. It might have just, yeah, this is um, just a, a markdown cell actually. So maybe let me convert this to a code cell really quickly. I'll create one. So I'll say this is an example of a code cell. Notice when I run it, so uh, what's happening now is it's saying starting up the machine. Every time you open DeepNote, it's going to take a little bit of time for the notebook to be set up. This is one of the drawbacks compared to Jupyter Notebook, but once it's ready to go, it's usually pretty fast. Um, and as I was saying, this is a code cell. So the same kind of error that we would get in Jupyter Notebook, we get here. If I wanted to convert this to a markdown cell, I could use uh, the shortcut Command Shift M. So for instance, I could have learned that by going to Command Palette here and then scrolling down a bit. And we can see here, Convert to Markdown is Command Shift M. If you're on um, a PC, it would be Control Shift M. And I can convert to code by doing the same sequence, but instead of M, I put Y. So for instance, I could change it to a markdown cell, but for the sake of kind of having it in the notes, let's have this here as an example of a code cell. So okay, this gives an error, but kind of what could work in a code cell? Well, really any Python code, right? So the Python code that we write for this class will be done in these cells. So I could do things like two plus two. I could do something like say the variable a equals three. And notice here, if I press enter instead of command enter, it puts a line right underneath so I can evaluate these at the same time. So then I could, let's say b equals seven, and then I could do a plus b. That gives me 10 for instance. Um, one thing I do want to point out is the order that you evaluate cells is extremely important. So when you first start up a notebook, what you might do is run notebook. And what that will do is run all of the cells top to bottom. Um, but if you're kind of defining variables and cells on your own without clicking run notebook, let me show you an example of what can go wrong. So for instance, let's say here I have C equal to three and I'm going to put a comment here. So I have written the code for this cell, but I will not run it yet. Then the next thing I'm going to do is create another code cell. And now what if I wanted to try something like C squared? Now this should also be familiar from Math 9, or if this is your first time coding in Python, the way that we get uh, exponentiation is with two stars and then the number. So here's C squared. But notice now what's going to happen is I run this and it's saying the name C is not defined. So I'm going to make a note here. Because I have not run, or even instead of having this as a comment, why don't we do it as a markdown cell? So I'm going to insert a cell above. I can do that with Command Shift K. And then I'm going to change this to a markdown cell by typing Command Shift M. And I can say below, we get an error because we have not run the cell above where C is defined. So that's what happens here. If I go back and now run this cell, so now I run C equal to three and I try again, I get nine, so three squared. So again, really quick introduction to code cells. We've seen a little bit about markdown cells, but I wanna show you a few more things that we can do with the markdown cells. So I'm gonna put new markdown cell. And I can say, this is an example of a markdown cell. They are used for writing explanations for your code and formatting all kinds of text. For example, again, if you're familiar with HTML, a lot of this works exactly the same. So I can say, this is how I can create elements of a list. I can say here is another element. So here I get these bulleted list items. Another thing I could do, so I'll say if you're familiar with LaTeX, so if you're familiar with LaTeX, you know we wrap everything in the dollar signs, so then I can say what about LaTeX? So one thing I could do 
is I could say something like, let's take the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. And let's say I wanted to show you the code that actually generated this. So I could put this in two tick marks, and then I could say, if I pass or copy paste this code inside of the tick marks. So notice this is how I display code. And I could say typing this gives this output. So that's one example. Um, again, if you're familiar with LaTeX um, or if you see my notes, this is how I get math to display. Maybe one last thing I want to show you is another example from HTML. So maybe I'll do, let's see, let's add another markdown cell. So I'll say here is how I can change the color of text. So I could say font color equals, let's say, red. And maybe I'll give a warning here, very scary. So, like this. so as we can see, this has changed the color to warning. So what do I want to say in my warning? Well, I want to say, be careful with writing markdown cells if you are already used to Jupyter slash HTML. So I'm going to say, ah, the general commands are very similar but sometimes there will be subtle differences. So all that to say is if you know how to do some kind of nice text formatting in like a Jupyter notebook or HTML and it's not working with DeepNote, chances are it's a small syntax difference. So just something to be aware of and something you could look up. So I think this is a good place to end the video. Again, really quick introduction to DeepNote. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we review some Python concepts.